Okay, um, I'm broadcasting. Maybe I'll wait a moment to make sure the video is going. All right, it looks like now I'm broadcasting. I am not um, in our apartment in Jerusalem. Looks like we have bad Wi-Fi, like those old cartoons where the mouth doesn't fit with the sound. So bear with me. Anyway, we're not home. We are in the north of Israel in this little place that we bought when we first moved here and never managed to fix up. And on top of me is this loft that we never managed to get rid of. And there's a fan because there's no, not enough electric for air conditioning, so I'm sweaty. Anyway, here's the thing. I don't know if you have seen my posts on Facebook for today or um, maybe seen something on a WhatsApp. Um, but my oldest daughter, who's my dear precious baby, her name is Chaya Moshko. For those of you, she's named after the Rebbe's wife, um, whose merit should protect us all. Chaya Moshko, Bashiprahana, um, is having a, an extreme toxic reaction, a rare toxic reaction to a prescription medication that's caused her, and it wasn't diagnosed for maybe a week. Um, it causes very severe burning so she has basically second degree burns um over most of her body and she's in the right now at the moment in a procedure under anesthesia to debride some of the burns um so why am i on because i felt like i should come on and then i felt like i couldn't i felt like a zombie but then a very close friend encouraged me to come and speak so um i do have things to say So first of all, I want to thank, I want to say thank you to God and to um, the people in my life for the way that people have stepped up. You may be among them, people who are praying, people who are offering financial support, um, you know, to help some of the family be there with her. People who are opening their hearts and understanding and reaching out. Um, I'm hearing from some people I haven't heard from for many years. It's very, very powerful for me because I this is really the first time, at least um, in the last several decades, that I have felt like I could reach out, like I had to reach out in a public way for help. Normally, I keep things more to a small circle. So thank you for that, and thank you to Hashem. These are the three weeks. We're in the three-week period in which um, we mourn the destruction of the temple, um, and the cause of the destruction was baseless hatred, sinaschimum, which is just, you know, at its core, it's a feeling of like, it's me or you, baby. I can't, if I give you, I have nothing. And um, if you have things, then that makes me smaller. And the solution, the tikkun, the healing, we're taught for millennia, we've been told that the tikkun for that is avaschimum, is unconditional, baseless love. Like, okay, it doesn't matter if it's my child. It doesn't matter if I have time right now. It doesn't matter if there are other things on my mind. I'm going to take this. I'm going to reach out. I don't expect people to do that. I don't know. You know, we are all available at different times, so nobody should feel pressure or guilt. Just, I just feel that the outpouring of love and support. Um, and and to be honest, the, the, the fact that I was able to open my heart and share when I'm normally don't want to do that. It's just I feel that there's something very cosmic happening um, as a result, and I'm just one person, and um, I'm sure that this is happening in many ways for many people, but I just want to be express my gratitude for that. So despite this ugly loft and the feeling paint in this place, I'm looking out the window in front of me, and I'm seeing the lights of Mayron um, a few kilometers from here, like three kilometers across uh, across a little forest in the valley where the great sage, the um, author of the Zohar, the receiver and transmitter of the of, of authentic Kabbalah, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, is buried. A tremendous holy site. Closer than that in the city of Tzfat, many holy tzaddikim sages are buried. The Arizal, for one of them, the founder of Lurianic Kabbalah, and many others. Um, and I'm invoking prayer, help, 
togetherness, these tzaddikim are described in Torah as collective souls, neshamot klaliot. Um, usually it's one in a generation, maybe there are a few, but there's one main, and, and through their consciousness and through their profound collective general souls, unifying souls, core souls, universal souls, we are all connected. So I'm invoking their presence, not just from my wonderful, beautiful daughter, and I'm asking that for her, this should not be only a healing of this incredibly painful reaction and of the skin that's been burned and blistered, um, like miraculously, but that it should be a healing for all, as we say, for Kal Yisrael and for all of humanity. It should be a healing of the hearts and the bodies and the separation, and, let, and I'm asking for a connection that the great so they can reach out to us from right here in this environment and awaken our own souls and awaken the comfort that lies within us, latent and dormant, of, that the soul knows, our souls know that we belong to something so much bigger, that we belong to each other. And this is a core foundation of what it's going to take now to get from where we are to the end, what's the end? The end is the Gi'ula Shlema, the end is the ultimate redemption, the messianic era. In that time we're promised there will be no sickness, there will be no suffering, there will be no death, there will be no jealousy, there will be no competition. And I feel that we're on the verge that the, these things that happen, I know it's scary for people, I know that some people, it's been pretty intense, like my family was like, ironically, you know, laughing and crying like ironically like none of us want to tell none of us wanted to tell anybody like ask for work off or i had a, a class i waited till the last minute to cancel because who would believe this like it's been so crazy we feel like people are going to think we're making it up but um but you know in the heart like my husband had a heart attack three weeks ago but thank god he's fine and there were so many miracles that made it happen like little pieces that because they were right there and happened right then that he's able to be fine thank god and God willing, this will be also a very deep healing. As I said, it's going to be raw. So 30 years, 29 years ago, I had a baby. This this baby, Chaya, was two. And her little sister, Altalea Deborah, was born, and she was strangled by the cord. The umbilical cord, it was wrapped around her neck several times, and for whatever reason, the midwife didn't respond and the pediatrician didn't respond and there was no oxygen in the room and she was without oxygen for, and nobody noticed that there was something wrong even though there was another birth in another room. It was a very crazy situation and she was born with a lot of damage, very extreme brain damage and other damage and then she was in the neonatal ICU for um, for three months and then she came a little, a little less than three months and she came home for three months and then we had 24-7 nursing and they also let her die at exactly six months. And for me, that catalyzed my soul's unquenchable desire to change things. And um, because of her soul, I experienced things from the other side of the veil. That um, there were other things that happened also over the years. I won't go into them, but you know, it, it wasn't, I'm not la da Like what I want to say is what I feel is not fake. It's super hard one. It didn't come from floating above what we call reality. It came from um, cats in the neighborhood. I don't know if you heard them howling. It, it came from a very, from very deep um, life and death, I guess you could say trauma. And each time that things happened, I considered, do I believe anything? If I believe it, do I want to be part of it? And um, I kept asking why, why, why? And I remember um, in one of my losses additional to this, um, actually I lost a younger brother in 2002. He left a young family and I remember walking up and down the beach in New Jersey. In New Jersey. It was Arab Rosh Hashanah, the day before Rosh Hashanah and walking up and down asking myself, do I believe anything? Like, I don't need to believe anything. What do I believe? Like, what is this world? Where am I? Who am I? What am I? What is this? And, and sobbing and for hours. 
and at the end of the at the end of the day at the end of the walking i just felt like an an inexorable inescapable immutable knowing inside my being that god is true that the torah is true and that the rebbe is true even though i have no idea what that means and that moved me forward and so what i'm here to tell you today and i'm expecting beautiful healing i mean it's a very intense situation but the prayers are definitely helping and please continue in the you know to, if you feel like taking on acts of kindness mitzvahs doesn't have to be for Hayamushka for my daughter let it be for the Gila. let it be for you let it be for those you love let it be for a world of unconditional love let it be for the end of this intense birth process where we move into the phase of the glories and the wonders we're promised the Arizal was buried right a little ways from my door here that he said that that he talked about how the prophecy that um that that in that the miracles of the wonders of the redemption of from egypt you know the splitting of the sea and the ten plagues and the the the, the splitting open of nature and 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 the fact that the rebel divine revelations that that opened up all worlds so that even the simplest person could experience total divine truth the miracles that we are destined we are promised to experience in this transition this transformation this birth process are going to be far greater than those wondrous even compared to those wonders and your actions will make the difference our actions will make the difference our togetherness our connection and and so <laughs> move forward consider yourself a player don't be in the stands you're not watching the game you're here because you have something to contribute and whether it's something you know, public and seemingly more cosmic, or whether it's something simple, personal between you and God, or between you and another person, even better. Do it because we're connected on that level now, and especially when we're connected through these tzaddikim, the collective souls, we're connected in such a way that every one of our actions can literally change the world. And this is also implicit in many places in the Torah, explicit, I should say, that one person, every person, should look at the world as equally balanced between uh, between good and evil, and that they're one good act, their one good word, or even their one good thought will tip the scales to total salvation and redemption. So I invite you to take that on yourself and uh, not in a pressured way, but in a loving way, in a knowing way. Unconditional love starts with you and you, and then you and God, and you and everyone else. It doesn't have to be sequential, it can be simultaneous, but it's a structure you can't have. You can only love others. We're commanded to love others like we love ourselves. If you don't love yourself that much, you can have a hard time with others. The more you love yourself, the less of a hard time you have with others. And that's part of this process. So ultimately, I want to end soon. What do I want to say here? That we're in a metamorphosis. I've been saying this in my last lives. We are in a metamorphosis. What is a metamorphosis? It's a total meltdown of one form of being, one structure, and a total reconstitution of the very strange, same structure, no death, just life, just a place of meltdown that moves us from one stage, from one state of being to another higher one, like caterpillar, caterpillar to butterfly. And my feeling, and I'm speaking from my heart now, my feeling is so much like when I look at, I, I'm, I'm sitting here like half a day, like in wonder at what's going on with people and half a day, not able to move and just like I guess that's called shock and I keep asking myself like what what you know I don't even have to ask it so much in words I feel it so profoundly that there is only one thing to do and that is to lean in to lean in like you might be afraid when we hear about other people's you know sorrows or troubles oftentimes we're like, oh my God, I'm so glad that's not happening. I can't even imagine what it would be like if that happens. I'm like that too. But I'm here to tell you that I believe with all my being that what's happening to us now, whether it's society breaking down or the pandemic or the scandemic or whatever you think it is or anything else that's happening, it's in order to allow us to open the illusion and sink in to the deeper reality and the deeper reality 
everything changes, not just spiritually, but physically too. Like if, if we can sink in, if we can lean in, if we can allow the metamorphosis, if we can allow ourselves to be melted. I mean, it's hard to try to be melted, but if something happens, Hasidus teaches us that there's only one purpose for creation, and that is the transformation of darkness into light so that the divine, infinite divine light and love and presence of God can shine into this physical world of concealment just like it does in the highest spiritual planes. So in order for us to be vessels for that, in order for us to be able to receive that, in order for us to be able to shine that, to be that, it's not far away. It's right here. It's right here. But it means letting go and sinking in, sinking into that deeper reality, connecting to God. Like I feel like, you know, it's been a very whirlwindy time last five weeks or so. All these crazy things have happened. And, and you know, I was telling my husband earlier, like in a, on one hand, it feels like it should be like you're standing on a cliff and the wind is blowing and every time something happens, it's blowing harder and how could you hold on? But it, it doesn't really feel like that. It really feels like more wind, sink deeper. More wind, closer to God. More wind, the essence is right here. And I just want to invite everybody. I don't know if I'm making sense in words, but I, 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 I'm asking Hashem to let you feel what I'm feeling and to let you see what I'm seeing and to let you step into what I hope we're all stepping into and without any suffering and without any pain and without even the illusion of pain or the fear. You know, let that be enough. Let's have the miraculous healing for everything now. But we cannot get to a world of infinite divine consciousness experienced within our finite bodies, minds, hearts, and personalities. I'll say that again. We're going toward a world of infinite divine consciousness and infinite divine light, infinite divine presence, and even infinite divine co-creative power experienced and encompassed within this head, this heart, this body, this physical world. How is that possible? Not from a place of separateness. It's not possible from this dimension. But God is inviting us to allow ourselves to fall deeper, to sink in, to lean in to something deeper. And yes, it's normal to be afraid. It's normal to be in shock sometimes. It's normal to be traumatized, but not to get pushed out. We have to melt. Melting doesn't have to be painful. Melting can be very pleasurable. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if it was less, you know, came with less. I'm praying for a world with no trauma and no pain, and I'm praying for my daughter. And I'm asking for unbelievable miracles, and I hope you will ask me with me, and you can do that by saying amen right now and add your prayers. And if you want to give charity, if you want to, you know, do kindness for a friend, or if you're Jewish, if you want to take home lighting Shabbat candles or anything else that speaks to you, do so. It will only help. Not only me, not only my daughter, but the, you, the universe, you as well. We're spiraling up into more and more light, and the light is then like a fountain, spiraling up and then shining down, raining down, showering down upon all of us. So everything everyone does affects the whole so quickly, so dramatically, so magnificently. We're in a very critical time. Like in a birth, you know, in a birth process, once it starts, it's pretty quiet as it's building, building, building for nine months. Once it starts, it gets pretty intense. And you think it's as intense as it gets, and then you get closer to the end, and then it just gets a lot more intense than that. And it is possible to roll with it. Chaya Mushka, my daughter, was the only child that I had. Of I gave birth six times. Um, she's the only one that didn't have a quarter on her neck. She's the only one that, like, I had, it was a long labor, like 20-something hours, but I was in such a spiritual and connected state that, like, I was, it was like I was floating up and down. I'm not going to say there was no internal pressure, but I was floating up and down with contractions to the very end. I was laughing. I actually went up the elevator in the, in the, um, into the hospital with the midwife. Not a midwife, a doula. And the doula had just had a baby, so she was kind of, rotund like I was and um and I was going through transition but because of the state that I was in because of the relaxation and the giving myself over and the riding with it people couldn't tell which one of us was the one in labor which is pretty amazing and that is my Chaya Mishka. that's 
you know, and then her life was a lot more traumatic, but that's the vision. We see the vision in the beginning, and then we need to, re to realize it and reveal it in the end. So for everybody here, you know, what's the core vision? What is the potential you're born with? What is the experience or the, um, the revelation that you're here to bring, to manifest into the world through your life? What is the melting down that you're being called upon to do? Because I'm feeling like I don't know how long it's going to be. Things are accelerating so fast. It could be, you know, I mean, it can be at any moment that the the transition is, is like in it fully underway and the birth happens. But I feel like we have to lean in. I feel like we have to allow the metamorphosis in ourselves. I feel like we have to be part of the solution and not be stuck in the problem, not be victims of the problem. So it's a very touchy thing that I'm saying here because I know that I used to be very scared of things. I think when things have happened to you, you in a way become less scared. It's hard to explain. But it almost, it doesn't really matter in a way what our emotions are. It's understandable. God also creates our emotions. But what we're committed to do, are we going to be warriors even while we're afraid? Are we going to lean in and sink in and allow ourselves to melt down and to create a new reality through our deepened connection and our connection to others and our, our, our acts of unconditional love, even if it's just a moment out of one day? Everyone can do that. So that's the question before everyone. I don't believe that we have the option. I've been expecting these times for many, many years. Or I basically got into this like gig when my baby Alti was born, and that was in 19, um, 90, 1990, 1991 is when I really got into it. When the Rebbe gave his, his famous um, declaration that it's time, and now it's up to every one of us, and even one of us, can make the difference. So because of the baby, and because of her soul, which clearly came down to activate me, I got activated. And it affected my family, and in some very, um, the trauma is still reverberating. And this, I'm praying and intending and trusting that this will be the final healing of that trauma through this very painful incident. Because you know what? We're all souls. And even though we don't remember why we came down when we're down, because that's part of the process in order to play this cosmic game, in order to do this cosmic co-creative process, we have to have a kind of amnesia by divine design, or we would not be able to experience darkness and we would not be able to transform it to light. But to do that, we have God's free choice implanted in our own hearts and our own mind. That's the only place where only God has free choice and the only place where free choice can exist because there's illusion, because there's darkness, because there's an appearance of separation that's right here. So I'm just encouraging, I want to reach out from this turbulence and ask for prayers and ask for acts of kindness, not necessarily to me, but to anybody. We're all in it together, truly. And I want to bring you like the clarion call of, it's almost certainly just going to accelerate, but we can have a birth like my birth with my Chaimushka. Or yeah, okay, you know, I can tell I'm having a contraction. It's pretty, it feels like a pressure, but okay, <laughs> tell me a joke, it's okay. I'm breathing, I'm good. It's all good. And I really felt that. So that's what I want to bless everybody with. And that this event should be the last traumatic event ever in human history. And we should move on to human desti destiny, into that promised world for which the world was created. But it really seems, amen, can you hear what's on? It really seems like we're going to have to change. That change doesn't have to take long. It can happen right now. But you cannot maintain that illusion of separateness and a resistance based on fear, like don't touch me, don't notice me, that's not going to get you where the universe needs you to go. That is not going to fulfill what your soul came down here to fulfill. It's just not going to do it. If I could change that, believe me, it would have been changed a long time ago. I've wanted to end death and suffering since my baby was born with an utter passion. But I'm seeing more and more not necessarily by my choice, but I am I'm aligning with it as best I can. I'm seeing more and more that this metamorphosis, that if we go with it, it's going to be amazing. And 
the darkness can turn to light in an instant, and it happens all the time, and it happens to me all the time. And may this just be another one of those times which I will share with you, and also with your help. But I'm just asking you not to be afraid of fear. I'm asking you not to be afraid of change, or if you're afraid of it, don't be afraid of being afraid of it. Like, if you're a woman and you gave birth, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a man and you have a woman who gave birth, you might know what I'm talking about. And if you didn't, you know, maybe go up and read, read, read up a little bit on what that's like. But it's a pathway that gets a constriction and pressure that in an instant, as soon as the last pressure comes, is done, it's a complete transformation into freedom and joy. And that's what we're going for here. So may the three weeks of mourning never be a time of mourning ever again, but may their inner light be revealed as joy and as, um, as connection and as miraculous goodness. That's what the Torah promises us, and that's what we need to see now. Also, the theme of the three weeks, and especially the last nine days of the three weeks, is uh, all about baseless hatred and baseless love. And it's an extremely crucial time to forgive other people and to forgive yourself, because if you don't forgive yourself, you can't forgive other people. Forgiving yourself might involve making amends. That's okay. You know, the ego resists admitting that we're wrong, but wow, does it feel great when you do? That's a big person. It's cool to be a big person, and it feels cool. It's just that little, you know, there's that little, like, counter force that says, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. If you have something wrong to make up for it, make up for it. You can. You can. I'm here to support. And if you need to work on your self-love, just do it. And if you need to know if God loves you, I'll, let, I'll just let me solve that mystery for you, for you right now. God loves you. And God needs you. And if not, you wouldn't be here. And the reason that it's hard and the reason that you have flaws, as I've said before in previous lives, is because that's your mission, to transmute that. To, the purpose of creation is to turn darkness into light so that the infinite light of God can shine all the way down here into this physical world of separateness, just like it does in the highest worlds above. And through that, I didn't say this last part before, we will create a dira batachtonim, a dwelling place for the divine, for God, and for our souls, and for the core of our souls, for our true beings in this physical world. In this physical world, each one of us will have our bodies, but of course a little bit upgraded, you know, no need for plastic surgery and no more planned obsolescence, but just the beautiful perfection of the physical world where the soul will shine through, the core of the soul will shine through, not only you, but everyone in your world, and God will be shining through it all, and it's, and it's impossible to imagine in actual detail, but everything that you could imagine is part of it and much, much, much more, and we're almost at the end. And what if all it takes is just a little bit more in this time of, you know, the three weeks of mourning and this time of chaos and craziness and fear? What if all of it takes is just a few people? The Rebbe said it only takes a few people. What if all of it takes is a few people to do a few more things or to melt in a little more or to allow ourselves to connect a little more or to trust God in the process a little more? Sorry for the beating. It's just what it is. What if that's all it takes? Don't hang back. Like I said to my husband earlier today, we don't even know why we're here or where we are or who we are. I mean, we know why, like theoretically, but like on a human level, let's give it up. Let's give it up. It's not gonna work anyway. We can't hold back this movement. It, we're gonna get born. So let's give up the resistance and the pretense and the wishing and the anger and the judgment. You know, feel your feelings, but don't, get, don't, get, don't marry them. They're like clouds, you know, they come and go on top of the clouds. There's always the sun shining. You want to connect to that sun shining. And that's the light of your soul and the light of God and your purpose for being here. Your soul is returning to its source and coming back down into your body with, out of desire every single instant. You might not notice it, but it's happening because it's here for a reason. You are here for a reason. I'm banging my laptop and shaking the picture and not noticing. Okay, we're letting it all hang out. He said it's going to be raw. Your soul's here for a reason. 
lean into the reason. There's chaos in the world, lean into the chaos. There's turbulence in your life, lean into the turbulence. Bring God into it. Ask for help. Expect miracles. There's no point in holding back because we're going forward. And when we do it together, together with ourselves, together with each other, and together with the Creator, when we remember that we're here for a purpose, even if we don't really feel what it is, I totally know, I totally know that miracles are going to happen and wonders are going to happen. They're already happening. We need to open our eyes and see them, but they're going to accelerate. And so summing up, again, I want to thank everybody for the outpouring of support and prayers. Please keep them up. My daughter, Chaim Lashka, Abbas Shifrachana, is in, I don't know if it's surgery, but they're cleaning out the, the burns and blisters right now. I understand it might be a repetitive process. It's very painful. Maybe it won't. Let's pray for miracles. Because she's definitely had enough, of, enough trauma in her life. As have we all. And um, our connection is so apropos at all times, and especially in these times. And it just takes a little more to push that baby out, to push the process through. And you have what it takes. And I'm here with you. And we're together, all of us. So let's make it happen. I guess that's what I'm here to say, because that's what came out. Okay. Much love, everybody. I, I like to say blessings from Jerusalem, but I am moving up north, so I'm going to have to start saying blessings from the Galilean hills, of the home of the holy souls, birthplace of Kabbalah, portal, spiritual portal between heaven and earth, and... Uh, city of the revelation of souls so i guess that's what's next take care everybody i love you i appreciate you let's make it happen